Hey folks, welcome back to Bite Size Booksmith, where we navigate the intersection between creativity and AI technology. Today, we're going to take a look at the new OpenAI flagship model, GPT 4.0. I'll also mention some of the novel crafter improvements that have launched over the last couple of days. Before we dive into the book project we'll be working on in today's demo, I wanted to show you the next sample codex that I'm working on. I hope to get this Friends to Lovers Instant Love Novella Codex out to you guys in the next week, sooner if I have time. I've already had some great feedback on Cypher Shadow, which is the first sample codex that I've offered, and I can't wait to share it with everybody. We'll head back to the main Novel Crafter page, and you're going to see the first improvement right here. Continue where you left off if you have three or more projects that you have started, you're actually going to see all of them at the top, the last three that you worked on. So let's go ahead and dig in and we'll start looking at GPT-40. Okay, folks, we are here in the Not Safe for Work Romance GPT. We're just going to use a couple pieces of this, primarily the framework in chat just to play around. But before we get to that, let's go ahead and we're going to go look at the prompts. The biggest thing that was done in this update was under general purpose, the GPT-40 has been added. This is the system prompt. There was also a lot of changes with regard to cleaning up what is here and putting the ones that are going to be probably the ones we're going to use the most towards the top and then the ones that are less used towards the bottom and getting rid of any of them that really weren't being used at all. If you want to change any of the settings for the general purpose models, what you have to do is come up here and clone it and then you'll be able to create your own personal copy and make any changes that you want to. So I actually did that a little while ago here with this Instant Love Developmental Editor for Contemporary, and you can go through here. There's been some changes as well in how the parameters are laid out. So you'll see there are quite a few parameters as well as advanced pr parameters as well. Instead of being across going across this way. They're now up and down. I will come down here to my thriller developmental editor and it's an older model, but it checks out. I'm actually going to go ahead and add the GPT for O. So what I did was it came down here, hit add model. And I'll just type in here GPT for O and then we'll find it over here. It'll be under Open AI, there we are. And O is right here. So that will always give you the most recent version of GPT 4.0. And then as I use it and get to know it a little bit better, I'll be able to come in here and make changes to the different parameters, temperature, top P, and any of these other things. One thing I also do want to show you is you have the ability to now make copies of your different prompts and share them with other people. Other people in the community, I can share mine with you guys and I will definitely be doing that. So all you do is you come up here to these three dots under the one that you wish to share and click copy to uh, clipboard. When you do this, there will be a long string of different alphanumeric characters to install one, you'll come up here to this new button, create from clipboard, and you have to allow it. And it actually went ahead and added it here. And it's a copy because I already have uh, a version of this already here. As I mentioned, I will definitely be sharing some of my newer ones. Okay. So let us move over to working with the GPT-4.0. So I'm going to come up here to chat. We're going to work with the short romance beats, and I'm just going to start talking to the uh, LLM and start getting a dialogue going and hopefully create an outline. That's what I'm, I wanted to do here. I was reading, there is a book series by Blake Black. It is the Soulful Seas duet. I'm just about to finish. I'm like 96%, almost done with the second book. 
It was really good. So I'm in the mood for ghosts. I'm not going to give out any kind of spoilers there. So please take a look at the short romance. Helps if I spell it right. Beats. So since I typed exactly the name, this is actually now going to be in the context. So my short romance beats are going to be in the context. And help me to come up with some story ideas for a romance that includes a ghost. Okay. Let's see what it's... Oh, and you know what? I did not mean to do that. Just kidding. I was actually going to use the new one that I developed. Okay, we're going to stop it. Okay. I always forget to come up here to select the AI, so... We are going to go back here to chats. We're going to start a new thread. Hit open thread. Come back up here. I guess it's technically not a contemporary. It's actually a paranormal. But I haven't added that to my paranormal one yet. So we'll try again. I will say that sometimes you find yourself doing things a couple times to just figure out what the heck you're doing when you're prompting. Okay, so let's try this again. Uh, take a look at the short romance beats and please come up with five story concepts. There we go. For a Oh, I said ghost. Uh, romance. Insta love romance. Because, yeah, it's instant love. That involves a ghost. Okay, let's try this again. Probably should have came up with the concept first. Because it wants to, oh goodness, it decided to give me five different stories. Way to go. Okay, so we've got Emily and Lucas here in the Haunted Heart. We're just going to go ahead and go with this one just for the sake of brevity. So we've got an introduction to the hero and the heroine. And then we've got the meet cute. Growing attraction, first kiss. Ooh, an intimate scene. Woohoo! Internal, falling in love, dark moment. Resolution. And... Happily ever after. I'm not sure about this one. Falls in love with a ghost. Not my best work, guys. Sorry. Okay. So let's continue. Okay. Please give me... I would like a pitch. A hook. And a premise. Okay. So when aspiring writer Emily moves into the secluded Victorian house looking to spark creativity, she finds more than inspiration in its winding halls, haunted by the ghost of a charming and enigmatic man named Lucas. That sounds incredibly AI. We can always make some changes. Emily's quest for a new story turns into a journey of love that transcends time, but can their budding romance withstand the barriers between the living and the dead? 
I'm wondering, can it? Obviously it will, because it is a romance. This, again, not my best work, but hey, we will see what happens. Okay, so let's move on and let's get a character list together. So what characters are in this story? Please give them first and last names. And what do we know about them? Okay, GPT. Emily Carter. Lucas Montgomery. Ghost and love interest. Got a best friend, a paranormal expert, a neighbor and local historian, as well as a ancestor. Of Lucas. Interesting. Okay. So we've got some people. We probably could extract this information, put it into the codex. However, I don't really want this information in this codex. We're really just testing. See what else. What about the settings? What settings are included in this story? Okay, we've got the house, key locations in the house. That's good. Uh, town, a couple places inside the town, a cemetery, uh, Maggie's apartment. So I guess that, if I remember correctly, that's her friend. And then we've also got the office there for Dr. Harold Faulkner. Interesting name. Cool. Okay, and then I actually would like it to, now that we've got all these people and we've given people names first and last. Let's have it refine the the pitch, the hook, and the premise. Please refine the pitch. Hook and premise. I like to refine it as I go, as we learn more information. Here we go. I guess our bad guy here is uh, Dr. Faulkner. Great. Okay, please refine the outline. And I like to... Hold on one second. This really isn't an outline. It's actually just a list of story beats, but... Whatever makes it happy. Here we go. Okay. So it went ahead and it took that information that we've added and it added it to our outline. I'm assuming that each of these beats are going to be a chapter, which I think, if I remember correctly, How to Write Short Stories by Nell Alexander. I believe that she did write it so each of these beats would actually be a chapter. So that works out for us. We probably could break this down into scenes and then we could take the break that down into scene beats, or we could just break it down into chapter beats, depending on how you want to write this. So let's go ahead. We're going to head to my shadows of Haven. I want to go ahead and I want to run some beats. And I unfortunately don't have any beats in that story because I'm probably never going to write that story. But I do happen to have some beats here that we could actually run in the shadows of Haven and see how it works, see how it comes out. So let's go ahead and we'll come here to generate pros and we'll go ahead and use the system one and come up here. Like with the chat prompts, you can also do the same thing of sharing and making the scene beat prompts your own. Here we go. So let's go ahead and see what it says. So. The scene bait is supposed to be uh, Abrina, who is the main character, fiddles with a small gadget under her desk. She's actually in a school at in where she lives within Haven, and her form of a silent rebellion against the 
learning, tuning out the teacher's voice. And she's thinking about engineering principles where they're talking about really boring stuff. Uh, and it's definitely way below her and beneath her. In the first beat, it talks a little bit about, so they're actually in a class on agricultural growth. So they can become better workers on this spaceship that has the last batch of humanity, or so they think. Okay, so I fiddle with the small gadget under my desk, the cool metal and intricate gears I comfort against the back drop of monotonous education. The teacher's voice fades into a distant hum as I twist and turn the tiny device, my fingers deftly navigating its components. This is my rebellion, my escape from the rote learning that binds us to a future of labor and mediocrity. I don't know that I would, you know, outright say that it is a, her saying is her rebellion. I do like this. What if the gear turned clockwise instead of counterclockwise? I muse, visualizing the possibilities. My mind drifts to the countless nights spent with my parents hacking old tech and free engineering discarded machinery. Their laughter echoes in my memory, mingling with the scent of burnt circuits and flickering flow of our makeshift workbench. And then we have the teacher back in the, you can hear her and she's thinking about her parents and she's thinking about her sister. Interesting. Okay. This, how much is this here? So it gave us 422 words, not the best. But not too bad either. I would definitely maybe run a, a couple of different chapters with this and see how it stands up against Opus. Because initially when I wrote this, I actually wrote this in Claude 2. So I wonder, wonder how it would stack up against Claude. But this is pretty good. Let's go ahead. We'll add another scene beat. Okay, let me grab the information here. Okay, here's another scene beat. In this beat, the teacher calls on her to answer a question and she responds and she keeps thinking about life because that's what teenagers do. I definitely need to make these more actionable beats. I need to definitely pay attention to my own advice. Okay, Albrina, the teacher's voice slices through the, my concentration like a blunt knife. My fingers freeze on the gadget's delicate gears, the room around me coming back into focus. I glance up, meeting her eyes with a practiced blank expression. Yes, I reply, slipping the small device in my pocket with a quick, smooth motion. Can you explain the importance of nitrogen in crop rotation? Her tone is flat, almost bored. I like this. Very good. Okay, so she's thinking about the fact that it's basically the stuff that they learned last year. And it knew, wasn't new then either. I like that. Outdated and irrelevant. Stuck in an endless loop of redundant information. I like that. Okay, let's move on to soil pH levels. This is cool. Yeah, I definitely think that I would probably turn off my Grammarly because it's it wants to take over but i definitely think that i'd be interested in and in looking at this more and seeing here we go we've got uh 421 words that it generated seeing how it stands up against some of the other stuff that i've created for this project and yeah i might give it a shot in the past i've definitely kept the gpt for more logic based stuff creating the characters the concepts I, of course, am adding my own stuff in, building out the world, that kind of stuff. And then I've always steered towards Claude for more of the creative stuff. So the processing of the beats. So, yeah, I'm definitely interested in seeing what it can do up against one another. We'll see how it does. Anyways, I look forward to hearing back from you guys. Have you tried the GPT-4O yet? 
what have you thought of it so far? I know I was working on some nonfiction business related stuff with it and it was a boss. It did some really cool stuff for me. I also noticed they've made some changes to the UI. So if you get in there, don't be weird like me and try to click on the wrong things. I was dazed there for a moment when I got in there and stuff was moved around. It doesn't take much these days. Uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, someone also mentioned that um, it, they got it to write some stuff that was a, a little more risque than normal. I know Claude's been doing the same thing. They've been able to get Claude to write some romance scenes. Am I going to tell you to do that? No, but people are getting it to work. Just make sure you don't get yourself shut down. That's all I will tell you. Make good choices. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and end this for today. Let us know how things are going for you guys and have an amazing day. Keep writing and uh, we'll talk to you again soon.